Yes guys, what's going on? Welcome to my channel, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the most easy and delicious lasagna. This recipe does take a little bit of time, but the end result is so worth it. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's start this off with two medium-sized brown onions, slice off the end opposite the root, and slice the onion in half through the root. Peel off the skins, and you guessed it, save it for a stock. Now we're going to dice the onion by making thin slices stopping at the root. Slice the onion through the center, also stopping at the root. Then come through and dice the onion into medium sized pieces. When you get to the root, make sure to trim off any excess flesh to avoid wastage and save the roots for a stock. Next, with six cloves of garlic, just slice them in half and thinly slice them. And if you prefer, you're more than welcome to mince the garlic instead. Thinly slice one stalk of celery into strips. Rotate the strips 90 degrees and dice the celery into nice even sized pieces. If you don't like celery, I still recommend you use it as it adds great depth to the sauce. And I'll admit, I'm not the biggest fan either, but I always use it when I'm making dishes like this. We're then going to peel three small or two large carrots. Slice off the tops and the bottoms and save the scraps for a stock. Slice each carrot in half and slice off a thin strip. Lay the carrot onto the flat side to avoid movement and continue slicing them into thin strips. Slice the strips into thin battens. Rotate them 90 degrees and dice them up nice and small just like we did with the celery. Now for the herbs, tightly scrunch up six grams of fresh oregano, grab your knife and give this a good rough chop. And with all the fresh herbs coming up, I will leave substitutes for the dried versions in the description below. Scrunch up three sprigs of rosemary leaves and same again, give them a good old rough chop. Same again with four sprigs of thyme leaves, which you don't actually have to cut up because they're pretty small already. And for the last herb, which is 10 grams of basil, Yet again, scrunch it up and go for gold. Next, give 230 grams of sun-dried tomatoes a rough chop. These are optional, so if you don't want to use them, that's fine, but I do highly recommend them. They will add the most delicious background flavor to the meat sauce. Then last but not least, with eight rashers or 220 grams of streaky bacon, we're going to slice them into thin strips, and you can probably notice that I have them in stacks of four, Doing this makes for quicker prep time and consistent even sized pieces. Once it's been stripped, rotate the bacon 90 degrees and dice all of it up into medium sized pieces. And once that's all done, let's start cooking. Place a large heavy base pot onto your stovetop over a high heat. Once hot, pour in two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil and add in the diced bacon. Fry this off for one minute, mixing it around frequently just until the bacon is slightly golden and the fat starts to render. Next, add in the diced onions, the diced celery, the diced carrots, the sliced or minced garlic, the roughly chopped oregano, the roughly chopped rosemary, and the roughly chopped thyme. Give that all a really good mix so those flavors can become friends and fry this off for eight minutes, giving it a good mix every minute or so. All we want to do here is slightly soften the vegetables, so if it does start to brown quickly, just turn the heat down slightly. After eight minutes, add in 500 grams of beef mince, which can be substituted for pork mince, 500 grams of pork mince, which can be substituted for beef mince, and I hope that makes sense, one tablespoon of sea salt flakes, and two teaspoons or 20 cracks of black pepper. Give that a really good mix, breaking up the mince, and continue to fry this off for five to six minutes, stirring it frequently, just until the mince is brown and no longer pink. Once that's achieved, pour in 300 milliliters of cheap red wine, which can be substituted for beef, chicken, or vegetable stock. Mix that through and boil this for five minutes to cook the alcohol out. This will deglaze our pot, releasing anything stuck to the bottom of the pot, and it will also add richness to the sauce. After five minutes, add in the sun-dried tomatoes if you're using them, the chopped basil, and 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds of tin diced tomatoes, Give it another really good mix. Test it for seasoning. And I'm going to add in one teaspoon of sea salt flakes and one teaspoon or 10 grams of black pepper. 
mix that all through and bring the sauce to a boil. Now that we're boiling away, reduce the heat to low, chuck a lid on and allow this to simmer for 45 minutes. 45 minutes later, we can remove the lid, give this a really good mix, keeping it in the pot, which I clearly failed to do right here. Chuck the lid back on and continue simmering over a low heat for another 45 minutes. So this has now been another 45 minutes. We can remove the lid again and give it another big mix. And at this stage, you'll notice that the sauce is really starting to thicken up, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now this time, we're going to put the lid back on, but only for 15 more minutes. And after 15 minutes, which is a total of one hour and 45 minutes cooking time, we can remove the lid for good. Give the sauce a really good mix, making sure to incorporate those surfaced flavors. Check it for seasoning again, as the flavors will develop over time. Add in one teaspoon of sea salt flakes, one teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper. Give that a final big mix. We can then remove it from the stovetop and allow it to rest. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then to make our bechamel, also known as white sauce, place a small to medium sized saucepan onto your stovetop and pour in 900 milliliters of full fat milk. Next, grab yourself one small brown onion and slice it in half, peel off the skin and save the scraps for a stock and the other half of the onion for another dish. With two dried or fresh bay leaves, we're going to place them onto the onion and using three cloves as nails, secure the bay leaves onto the onion. And this right here is called an onion clout or onion pique and this will flavor our bechamel, giving it a fantastic herbal and spiced flavor. Add the onion clout to the milk, place it onto a medium heat and heat the milk to just under simmering point, but please don't let it boil. Whilst the milk is slowly heating up, place a large saucepan onto your stovetop over a medium heat, add in 90 grams of unsalted butter and allow it to melt. Once melted, tip in 90 grams of plain flour and mix that together to form a paste. And if you didn't know, the real name for this is roux, which is just essentially a thickening agent. We're going to cook our roux for two minutes, stirring it pretty regularly just to cook out the flour taste. After two minutes cooking the roux, the milk will be hot but not boiled and ready to go. We can remove the onion clout and actually save it for a stock. What we're then going to do is ladle or spoon the milk mixture a small amount at a time into the roux and mix the milk until fully incorporated. The reason we add small amounts at a time is because you can always add but you can't take out. If we were to make this too runny, we'd have to start the roux again, which is a waste of time and money. But don't worry, I've got you, this recipe is spot on. Tip in the last little bit of the milk mixture and give that a good mix until you have a really smooth and pourable but still slightly thick bechamel sauce. Once done, we can remove it from the heat and grate in one to one and a half cups of fresh Parmesan cheese. Season it with one teaspoon of sea salt flakes and give it a good mix to allow the cheese to melt through the sauce. To prepare the lasagna, Grease a large oven tray with some unsalted butter, making sure to cover the whole inside of the tray. We can then spoon in the meat sauce and I use three ladles worth for the bottom layer. Then with 350 grams of lasagna sheets, these ones are instant sheets, meaning they don't have to be pre-boiled. And I'll make sure to leave all the details for the other types of sheets in the description below. We just want to lay them over the meat sauce and try not to overlap them too much, but it doesn't really matter if they are slightly. And then to fill in the gaps, just snap or cut the sheets to fill in the remaining gaps. For the next layer, pour on two cups worth of bechamel sauce and evenly spread it out, making sure to cover the whole layer. We can then add on more meat sauce, making sure it's evenly spread out. If you want to, on the second layer of the sauce, we can then grate over some Parmesan cheese, but that's completely up to you. I just find it adds that little bit of extra flavor. Then lay over more of the lasagna sheets again and then repeat this whole process until you lay a third layer of lasagna sheets. On the last layer, pour on the remaining bechamel sauce and spread it out completely covering the top. Grate over one to one and a half cups of Parmesan cheese, completely covering the surface. Give the sides of the tray a wipe just so nothing burns. Place over some aluminium foil nice and tightly and then bake this in our preheated oven for 45 minutes. Now after 45 minutes, we can carefully remove the foil and try not to pull off any of that cheese. Grate over more Parmesan cheese, about half a cup's worth, and place this back into the oven for 25 to 30 minutes or until golden and crispy on top. And then just look at that. This is beautifully golden brown with a fantastic cheese crust on top. 
I'd recommend leaving this for 10 minutes now. It will make it easier to portion. Plus, this will destroy your mouth if you try to eat this straight away. Once it's cooled down slightly, we can then carefully cut it open. And seriously, how good does that look? Place it onto your plate of your choice. Place on a basil leaf as a garnish. And dig in. The flavour on this lasagna is absolutely fantastic. That meat is tender, the sauce is rich and full of flavour, and that creamy and cheesy bechamel sauce is just so good. Also, when you bake this in the oven, you get a really nice cheese crust on top, which adds fantastic texture to the dish. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I was able to teach you something. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to see hundreds of more fantastic recipes. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.